hey you guys i am back with another video if you haven't been here in a while you might notice the name change i changed the name of my channel i am now cherish daughter instead of cherish my daughter but it's the same channel if you want to know why i did that i did a video on that so i'll link that up above so that you'll be able to know um what that's all about but today i really wanted to do a video on perimenopause shout out to heather baxter i watched a video on her channel um yesterday uh about perimenopause and menopause in general and i was really inspired by everything that she shared i'll also link her video so that you can go out and um watch it very um very good video she had a lot of really good information i'm not here to present you know all the research or the full scope of what you can experience with perimenopause i just want to share what my personal experience has been i mean this is for the person you know who's looking ahead to perimenopause or experiencing some symptoms themselves and they just want to hear what a regular person has to say because personally i've been on a lot of uh, youtube channels of of gurus on the subject and some of them you know even have supplements that they sell and sometimes it can be hard to decipher whether or not I need to be taking these supplements or if I'm experiencing some kind of a sales pitch. So I really like watching videos of regular people sharing what they're going through and what has worked for them. So for this video, I'm just going to be discussing my symptoms. I'll do another video about what has worked for me. So the first symptoms that I experienced I started experiencing when I turned 40. I am now 47. And just to be clear, a woman is not considered to be in menopause until they haven't had their period for a full year. So even if you stop having your period for six months and then you get your period and then it goes away again, until it stays gone for an entire year, you're not considered to be in menopause. So I still have my period. I've never missed my period, not one month. And so I would not be considered menopausal. I would be considered perimenopausal because of the symptoms that I'm having. So when I turned 40, my period went from being four to six days long, six days maximum, to being nine days long. And I have about four days of heavy bleeding. So heavy bleeding is a common symptom of perimenopause. I'm talking about the kind of bleeding where you just, you can actually feel, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry to gross anyone else out, but I can actually feel the blood gushing out. And it's the kind of situation where it becomes very uncomfortable to be, you know, in a public restroom or away from home, especially since sometimes I run a high risk of leaking or soiling something. Um, and so that's been a difficult adjustment to make. Another symptom I've experienced is brain fog. The brain fog is probably what I felt like at the time was the most alarming for me. Like it, at first it was things like, you know, you, you, you're downstairs and you're running upstairs to go do something. When you get upstairs, you can't remember what, what you want to do. And initially if I paused and thought about it for a while, I could recover why I was upstairs, but it progressed to the point where that was just gone forever. And, or I'd be in Target and I can't remember where I parked my car and I'd be walking up and down the rows in the parking lot trying to find my car or I can't remember my child's name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For a while, I'm trying to remember their name and that it's all hormonal. It's all the hormone shifting. Okay. I was retaining a lot of weight. My entire life, I was thin. Um, I didn't really worry all that much about weight gain, but all of a sudden I turned 40 and I gained all this weight, especially around my middle area, my butt, my thighs. Uh, my husband wasn't complaining, but you know, I would walk past the mirror and wonder who, who that is in the mirror. Okay. 
And so quick, rapid weight gain, my thyroid started to not work as well. I started expressing hypo, hypothyroid and all this. There's a whole long, whole long list for hypothyroid, including, you know, things like low energy, things like feeling really cold, super dry skin, a lot of shedding, thinning hair. I lost my eyebrows from here to here. Um, along with the weight gain, okay? I also experienced depression, and for me, it was a lack of interest in things that I had been interested in before, not really being able to find pleasure in anything, low libido. Um, I could still get through my tasks, but, you know, and, and for that, and I wasn't necessarily feeling sad, and for that reason, I didn't realize I was experiencing depression, but it was depression, um, as I said, low libido. I haven't experienced the painful sex, but I've been concerned about that because I've heard that that's a symptom that a lot of women experience. Anxiety. I, I was looking for panic attacks or something like that because that's what I've heard other people describe. But for me, I wasn't having panic attacks, but everything became a big deal. I would make a grocery list to go to the supermarket to prepare meals for my family. When I got to the supermarket, it was just too many choices. All of a sudden, everything was overwhelming. You guys, this is very different for me. If you look through my channel, you will see that I used to cook a month's worth of food, okay? Cooking for a month's worth of groceries used to be nothing for me, but all of a sudden now with the anxiety, it's such a big deal to meal plan. It's such a big deal to grocery shop. It was such a big deal, you know, the entertaining that um, my family usually does became such a big deal. Pre prepping for it managing the people when they were in my house, cleaning up after them after they left. And all the while, these changes, me not really identifying them as anxiety from having perimenopause and having people not fully understand what's going on with me and maybe misinterpreting why I'm reacting and responding this way. You know, homeschooling my kids, being overwhelmed, forgetting what my, not really feeling connected to, to what my purpose was in doing certain things. And then I've assumed additional responsibilities with, with, with for example, I teach classes at the Umbrella School where my daughters are taking high school classes. And just feeling generally overwhelmed with that and not necessarily being able to articulate and identify what I'm going through as some kind of chemical situation that's shifting in my body as opposed to actually being a problem in reality. Because these are all things that I managed well before. And so that has been part of the reason why I haven't been here making YouTube videos because what would I say? I'm struggling with the very things I've been, you know, trying to help other people with and was successful with before. Yeah, guys, after we went through all of that with uh, puberty and with childbirth and with raising little kids when you get to the other side and they're graduating from college and they're starting their lives and you're so excited and they might be getting married and then here comes menopause. <laughs> so it's been an adjustment, you guys. A lot of times not realizing that this is what's going on and you know, emotionally feeling like you're in perpetual PMS, I've had to make a lot of adjustments. So in the next video, I'll be sharing you know, what some of the things are that I've been trying that have been working for me and what hasn't been working for me. So let me know what your symptoms are in the comments down below. I find this kind of information sharing very helpful. Be blessed.